I want to talk about an inflamed liver. The problem with people that have inflammation in the liver is many times they don't know they have inflammation in the liver and it progresses uh, developing scar tissue and then fibrosis and then cirrhosis. And so the good news about the liver is that it's robust and it is one of the only organs that can completely regenerate. But you also have to realize that there are so many people out there that have inflammation in the liver and they don't have a clue and it's building up over time and a lot of the symptoms don't occur until later in life. But one of the big symptoms is that you're just a little lethargic, you're a little tired, and you don't know that's connected to an inflamed liver. I had an inflamed liver for many years, and I didn't really know it. In fact, I had a lot of the symptoms in my right shoulder right up to my neck, and I had no idea that was my liver. And if someone would have educated me on that a long time ago, I would have been able to do something about it. And now my weakness is my liver. And so if you have inflammation in your liver or scar tissue or even a fatty liver, that can also give you a lot of additional problems like arthritis and decreased thyroid function and a lot of digestive issues and weakness within the gallbladder because the liver makes bile and if you don't have the full liver capacity you're not going to have the bile to help you digest all the fat soluble vitamins and so the first thing you need to know is uh, what are the most common things that can cause uh, inflammation in your liver number one sugar number two refined carbohydrates Number three, alcohol. Number four, vegetable oils, which is in most of your foods if you go to the grocery store. Soy oil, corn oil, canola, cottonseed. Very, very damaging on the liver. Also, too much snacking can raise insulin and create a lot of inflammation in your liver as well. And also, there are people that have a lot of autoimmune diseases, okay? Um, so their own immune system is attacking their own organs. And... In autoimmune conditions, people nearly always have an inflamed liver. And so if you're watching and you have an autoimmune disease, this video is for you. The, the problem with inflammation in general is that cancer tends to travel to areas of inflammation. So your goal should be to eliminate as much inflammation as possible just to prevent any cancer from traveling if you happen to get cancer. With inflammation in the liver, over time, you slowly lose liver function, but it's very, very slow, and you might not even be aware that it's occurring until it's pretty well invaded uh, most of the liver function. The interesting thing about the liver is you don't need much of it to function normally. It's a robust organ. It can take a beating, and it can completely regenerate if you don't let it get too far. Cruciferous vegetables are probably one of the best things you can consume to help support the liver. All right, let's talk about the things that you should be doing if you have an inflamed liver. Milk thistle, very important, 500 milligrams per day. Okay, milk thistle. It's called hepatoprotective. It protects the liver cells. Next thing is vitamin D. Vitamin D is the best natural anti-inflammatory. It has virtually no side effects. And I would take vitamin D at levels between 10,000 to 20,000 or even more per day. Those are IUs, international units. And more if you have a lot of inflammation or an autoimmune disease. The next thing I would highly recommend, and this is very, very important, is fasting at least 18 hours of no food. You can drink water, but no food in that 18 hours. Okay, so you'd have six hour eating window and 18 hours of fasting. That's gonna give you a tremendous amount of what's called autophagy, which is gonna help to repair liver function. It's going to help to uh, take these damaged proteins in the liver, the scar tissue, and help to recycle that into new liver tissue. Very, very, very important. The other uh, remedy I'm going to recommend is called Tutka. Tutka is my secret remedy to a lot of different conditions, especially with inflammation in your liver. Basically, Tutka is bare bile, okay? Uh, it's made synthetically, but even though it's synthetic, it seems to be something that's uh, very beneficial. And I've never seen any negative effects from taking Tutka. I would take two in the morning on an empty stomach and two in the afternoon on an empty stomach. And it's going to increase the flow of bile. It's going to create a nice anti-inflammatory effect. Very cool stuff. And then tocotrienols. This is a type of vitamin E, one of the best most powerful types of vitamin E, like 50 times stronger than tocopherols. Take 300 milligrams uh, per day um, with a meal. 
and the tocotrienols, the vitamin E, is going to go in there and really clean up the free radicals for you. Uh, very powerful as an anti-inflammatory. Very good also for any type of heart problems and coronary artery problems. And then the last thing is selenium at 200 micrograms, not milligrams, micrograms. Selenium is a very good antioxidant for the liver. It's also good to help decrease the risk for cancer. It's also good for the thyroid in converting T4 to T3. But overall, we have milk thistle, vitamin D, fasting, tudka, tocotrienol, selenium, and cruciferous vegetables are all important for an inflamed liver and also preventing the scarring of the liver. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.